Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report with the Market Guys. I'm AJ Monte. This is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA, again known as the Diamonds. And if you've been following along with the Market Guys, you'll know that I leave my lines on the chart from the previous report so you can see how well the technical analysis worked out as a forecasting tool. And if you're joining the market guys for the first time, let me introduce you to candle charts here, which in my opinion is the best tool that you can use for forecasting price action. And here's why. These lines, again, were drawn last week. And Friday, right here, I put out a report, which is on the 25th, right after the market closed. And I noted that this particular candle, that red candle, had a long upper shadow. Let me zoom in here for you so you can see that. And I also noted that the price was pulling back from this blue line, which is the 20-period moving average. So from this candle, I drew this diagonal line down, saying that we would most likely move down to fill this gap right here. And then I drew a roll reversal line right here at 216.62, forecasting that that would be the gap fill support level. And lo and behold, look at that. The low from Tuesday hit that line perfectly, reached my gap, which is the end of that line there, and then bounced all the way up to this line, which I drew as the resistance gap fill point, which you can see here there's a gap. Now, what does this have to do with next week? Well, there's a lot of signs right here that tell us that most likely the price is going to drop from this point. So let me do this. Let me erase the forecast line from last week, and I'm now going to draw the line which I think will be the price action for next week. I think we're going to pull back because this gap fill point is already been reached, and if you're following my gap strategies, you'll know that 80% of the time after a gap fills, the price usually reverses. Again, this is the first example. It worked perfectly. The gap filled here Monday and Tuesday, and then it reversed and went right back up to my horizontal line up here resistance. So now that we've closed right at that gap fill point, chances are the prices will start to drop. So that's the forecast for the diamonds. Now, if we look at the spiders, which is the S&P 500 ETF, same thing applies. I drew my diagonal line right here after Friday's close. Again, see this long shadow? That's a vertical line from the top of that candle. That's usually a sign that the sellers are starting to move in. So I started my line right here in a diagonal fashion saying that this two, that gap right there, would most likely fill and that would be the support level at which time we saw the bounce on Tuesday. Again, different market. This is the S&P 500. It's different than the Dow. It measures 500 stocks. The Dow is 30. And look at that. It opened right on that support level, almost exactly, maybe a penny off, and then rallied right back up. So what's the forecast for the S&P right here? Well, I'm going to remove that drawing. This is called a spinning top. See the long shadow up on top? We have hit a resistance point right here. So I'll draw that as resistance. And there's another sign that I want you to pay very close attention to, and that is not only do we have a spinning top here after the market had rallied, but we're seeing it on lower volume. And when the market moves up and the volume starts to drop, it tells us that the buyers are losing some of that momentum. So I think we're going to pull right back to that 20-period moving average. That's my target. The end of that diagonal line is my target for next week, right around 245.49. So keep that in mind as we study the price action and track that short-term trading leg. Now, going on to the Qs, which is the power shares, this more or less tracks the NASDAQ market. You'll see as I zoom in, this was interesting because the week before last, I drew this line here as a forecast. I projected the 20-period moving average, 
and I said that we would most likely pull back from that moving average. That was last week's report. Did that perfectly. I then left that line in place last week, and all I did was I extended the downward leg to this point right here with that being my target, and I said we would most likely pull back. Again, look how accurate this is. It's almost uncanny. And then right after we hit this low right here, we bounced right back up. So I'm going to erase all lines, and I'm going to then back up just a little bit because I want to show you how to draw a resistance point. This is a high, this is a high, and you can see that after it reaches highs, it pulled back. We are seeing successively higher highs, but after we reach these highs, you'll notice that we do see drops in volume. See, today, on Friday the 1st, we dropped the volume. Back here on this bearish engulfing pattern, the day after that, we dropped in volume. Right back here on this big candle right there, we saw the drop in volume. We're seeing the drop in volume, which tells me that we're most likely going to pull back next week for the queue. So I'm going to leave that in place so you can track that and follow along. Now, with the Russell 2000, this is a more broad-based index. This is 2,000 stocks, obviously, and you can see that this was my forecast line from the week before last, and I said that we would most likely test this as resistance. The Russell 2000 did not pull back like the other markets, did not at all. This is the only one that did not. It continued higher, and so what I'm going to do is show you a little trick in how to forecast. I'm going to erase these lines. This long stretch of green right here, this is called a stale green light. See this? We have three, six, so we have seven green candles in a row, and there's a great chance that we're going to start to see some red coming along. That's number one. Number two, we see a wide divergence from that moving average. That's called the rubber band effect. You'll notice that back here, the stock pulled below that moving average and then snapped back to it. Back here again, it pulled down below the moving average, snapped back to it. Up here, it pulled way above the moving average, snapped back to it. So these divergences are something that could be measured, and we're doing just that by showing you these arrows here and how it pulls back. So I believe that the Russell 2000 is going to pull back just like that to the moving average, which I'm even going so far to draw and project out the I believe the moving average is going to look like that and I think we're going to pull back to it so keep that in mind as we watch that market as well now finally I want to draw your attention to something that I'm tracking very closely and that is Hurricane Irma right here we just got hit by Hurricane Harvey. In fact, we're making a relief run to Texas next week. We're bringing supplies there. I might actually wind up having a hurricane on the way back. And this is something that could very much affect our economy. If we get a one-two punch like a Harvey, this could be devastating. Irma right here is already a Category 3. And you can see the projection here. Uh, a while back, I started making forecasts for weather because I have studied weather. My degree is in aerospace, so I'm, I'm more or less uh, very fluent in these concepts of weather forecasting. And I do apply this to the general markets. In fact, price action and forecasting price in the stock market is very similar to forecasting weather patterns, believe it or not. And all you have to do is look at momentum, you have to look at direction, you look at in weather, you look at wind, in the stock market, you look at volume. So we measure these things, and, and that's why we're able to be very accurate in our forecast, and I hope you're following along and tracking that accuracy as well. Now, another thing I'd like to point your attention to is our website. If you go to the Market Guys website and click on the video tab right there, you can scroll down and you see these very short videos called market shots. See, second row down on the right is the rubber band effect. I mentioned that to you. And you can also look at volume and how that plays into the equation. You can go down here and look at the 20-period moving average. You could study that and look at different patterns and get familiar with these because once you become fluent in at least recognizing these patterns, it's going to help you increase the probability of making money, not because you're a great forecaster. You'll start to make more profits because you're losing less as you use these charts 
to minimize the risk. And that's the whole thing. You're going to be wrong from time to time. And if you can learn how to minimize the risk and keep those losses small, thanks to the charts as a risk management tool, your profits wind up increasing down the road because you're not giving up so much in losses when you're wrong. It's not how many times you're right that counts. It's how little you lose when you're wrong that counts. That's the whole theme here. So have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. So long. This video segment is a small part of what the Market Guys offer through their educational products and services. If you are interested in any of our trade alert services or you would like more information about our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, simply contact us at info at